hi everyone welcome to my youtube channel catch up with toiba so i'm experimenting on a few ideas and today i thought of answering one question and that is how did i become a content creator in south korea what led me to become an influencer so here you go enjoy it okay how i got into it is a very funny question because uh like i said earlier i came in when corona just broke out so believe me it was boring I was indoors most of the time. I only went out like once a week to get groceries, so I don't starve to death. Uh, I order online and they get delivered to my doorsteps. But um, I think I started becoming or wishing to become an influencer because um, back in my country, when I was in the university, I was part of student union. So I was really popular in school. So I had a lot of uh, social media following. So I was seeing opportunities online when I got to Korea about being a supporter. I think that's the word that they use most here. Instead of using influencer now, it was supporting. So the way it is, is they advertise positions for international students or foreigners. They may not be students, they might come as something else, as workers or anything. So they tell you this is what they want you to promote maybe an idea or a place and then they ask you to come take some pictures or they send pictures of the places to you and then you weave content around it you write maybe a few lines and then you post it on your social media and then maybe you get paid sometimes you get paid in money sometimes you get paid with um gifts maybe mugs or jackets or socks or something like that and then uh it gets delivered to you and that's just it you don't have to do anything else except submit the link for the posting so i applied for a study in korea team for the ministry of education in 2020 which i've been doing till 2022 by the way yeah so i applied as an sns specialist what sns specialists do is they uh, write content about their studying career journey whatever you've been doing while you're studying Maybe you just study or maybe you just do other things, maybe part-time jobs or anything. You don't want to hear your experiences. That's just basically what you do and you don't have to do much and you get paid about uh, $500 for six months, which is a lot of money for students, right? So after concluding that in 2020, I saw another advertisement by the Daegu City, um, uh, Daegu Tourism Organization, where they are calling for 20 foreigners which is where my, myself and some of my friends applied to and we got selected and we get paid monthly maybe twenty dollars and then we got some gifts at the opening ceremony and at the closing ceremony so like that i started applying to every opportunity that i see because i i saw that inherently i had my weekends free so there was nothing i could fill them with and those were opportunities for free travel free tourist activities and i wanted to know where i'm living to get integrated into the society in case the coronavirus restrictions were called off i don't want to be the person without friends after two years so yeah those those, those are the reasons why i started and now I've, I've involved myself in a lot of programs even outside daegu i uh, support and i promote content relating to soul as well last year i was part of global soul mate for nine months, we we go to places, different places in Seoul and take pictures and make videos with other people. There are about 130 people involved in this program. And for the nine months, we're getting paid $70. So out of the $70, I travel. Sometimes I add my money. But it was okay for me because it was an opportunity for me to see outside my comfort zone, which was Daegu. And aside from that, I did a whole a lot of other international gigs too. Like there are some organizations that reached out to me on social media and told me that they needed me to research about some things relating to Asia. For example, I'm working with Restless Development. It's a very big educational, education uh, focused um, organization that research about how education and power and uh, the uh, parties involved in making policy are affected in part of Asia, in Africa and some other continents like that. So it's been fun.